Hello, everyone. Let me uh, bring up my slides here. Hopefully you can see that okay. We see everything great and we can hear you fine. Thanks, Dr. Gregory. Fantastic, that's what we like to hear. Surely, if there was some safe, simple, side effect-free solution uh, to the obesity epidemic, we'd know about it by now, right? Well, I'm not so sure. It may take an average of 17 years before research evidence makes it into day-to-day -day clinical practice. To take one example that was particularly poignant for my family, heart disease. Decades ago, Dr. Dean Ornish and colleagues published evidence in one of the most prestigious medical journals in the world that our leading cause of death could be reversed with diet and lifestyle changes alone, yet hardly anything changed. Even now, hundreds of thousands of Americans continue to needlessly die each year from what we learned decades ago was a reversible condition. I had seen it with my own eyes. My grandmother was cured of her end-stage heart disease by one of Dean's contemporaries, Nathan Pritikin, using similar methods. She was given a medical death sentence at age 65, but thanks to a healthy diet, um, after one too many open-heart surgeries, uh, she was able to live another 31 years on this earth till age 96 to continue to enjoy six grandkids, including me. So, if effectively the cure to our number one killer, men and women could get lost down some rabbit hole and ignored, what else might there be buried in the medical literature that could help my patients but just didn't have a you know, corporate budget driving its promotion? Well, I made it my life's mission to find out. That's why I became a doctor in the first place and why I started my nonprofit site, nutritionfacts.org. Everything on the website is free. There are no ads, no corporate sponsorships, strictly non-commercial, not selling anything, just put up as a public service, as a labor of love, as a tribute to my grandmother. New videos and articles uploaded almost every day on the latest in evidence-based nutrition. What a concept. Okay, so what does the science show is the best way to lose weight? If you want testimonials and before and after pictures, you have come to the wrong place. I'm not interested in anecdotes. I'm interested in evidence. And when it comes to making decisions as life and death important as the health and well-being of you and your family, it's really only one question. What does the best available balance of evidence say right now? The problem is that even just sticking to the peer-reviewed medical literature is not enough, as false and scientifically unsupported beliefs about obesity are pervasive even in scientific journals. The only way to get at the truth, then, is to dive deep in the primary literature and read all the original studies themselves, but who's got time for that? There are more than a half million scientific papers on obesity with a hundred new ones published every day. But that's what we do at NutritionFacts.org. We come through tens of thousands of studies a year, so you don't have to. And indeed, we uncovered a treasure trove of buried data, like today I'll cover simple spices, proven, randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled trials to accelerate weight loss for pennies a day. But with so little profit potential, it's no wonder they never saw the light of day. The only profiting I care about, though, is your health. That's why 100% of the proceeds I get from all my books and DVDs and speaking engagements are all donated to charity. I just want to do for your family what Pritikin did for my family. But wait, I mean, isn't weight loss just about eating less and moving more? I mean, isn't a calorie a calorie? That's what the food industry wants you to think. The notion that a calorie from one source is just as fattening as a calorie from any other, is a trope broadcast by the food industry as a way to absolve itself of culpability. Coca-Cola even put out an ad emphasizing this one simple common sense fact. As the current and past chairs of Harvard's nutrition department put it, this central argument for, from industry is that the overconsumption of calories from carrots would be no different than the overconsumption of calories from soda. I mean, if a calorie is just a calorie, why does it matter what kind of foods you put in your mouth? Well, let's explore that example of carrots versus Coca-Cola. It's true that in a tightly controlled laboratory setting, 240 calories of carrots, 10 carrots, 
would have the same effect on calorie balance as 240 calories in a bottle of Coke. But this comparison falls flat on its face out in the real world. I mean, you could chug those liquid candy calories down in less than a minute, but eating 240 calories of carrots would take you more than two and a half hours of constant chewing. It's been tested. Not only would your jaw get sore, but 240 calorie carrots is like five cups. You might not even be able to fit them all in. Right? Our stomach is only so big. Once we fill it up, stretch receptors in our stomach walls tells us when we've had enough, but different foods have different amounts of calories per stomachful. Some foods have more calories per cup, per pound, per mouthful than others. This is the concept of calorie density, the number of calories for a given amount of food. As you can see, oil, for example, is a high calorie density, which means that it has a high calorie concentration, lots of calories packed into a small space. So drizzling just a tablespoon of oil on, oil on a dish adds over 100 calories. For those same calories, you could have instead eaten about mm, two cups of blackberries, for example, a food with a low calorie density. So these two meals have the same number of calories. Uh, you could swig down that spoonful of oil and not even feel a difference in your stomach, but you know, eating a couple cups of berry uh, could start to fill you up. That's why, yes, biochemically, a calorie is a calorie, but eating the same amount of calories in different forms can have different effects. Thank you